This is a 2020 Ford Escape SEL. So welcome to our uh, how to use the technology in a car part for uh, the 2020 Ford Escape SEL. So um, what we're going to talk about is steering wheel controls and the driver's information center. So uh, starting with the steering wheel controls, this uh, over here is your cruise control on and off. Okay? This is of course resume and then you push it up to set it uh, and then you can go up to increase the set speed or down to decrease the set speed. Um, this is your cancel button and then this is your gap adjuster for your adaptive cruise control. Over here you've got a you know volume minus, volume plus and then a mute button and then if we move over here to the right this is where you control your driver's information center right here and then down here you've got your voice command button and then skip forwards, uh, skip backwards, skip forwards uh, or your phone on or phone off button. So we're going to be using these buttons right here to control the driver's information screen. So basically the, war, the way Ford has set this up is if I uh, go up or down with this button, on the screen you can see a little menu on the left. Then you can see a title for it on the top. So here's what's called My View, and we have driver assist and navigation and audio and phone and information. Okay, you also have a menu button. Now, anytime this little menu button shows up on the right, you can use this menu button to access more features. So right now, it is currently showing trip one, but I can change that and have it show trip two up here if I want. Okay. I'm going to press the menu button again. I can reset all values or I can configure the view. So I'm going to press configure. And now you can see that anything that is check marked on the screen is showing. So my trip odometer is showing. I can press OK to not show it or to show it. Same with the trip timer, the average fuel. And then you've got uh, instantaneous fuel down here or distance to empty. Okay. Now. Instantaneous fuel will, will obviously, I think, come on when you're driving. So let's just take one of these off here and let's go to the back button to go to my screen. Okay, and we're gonna go back again. And now you can see that my screen has changed. Okay, it's no longer the same four squares because I took one square off. Um, so I'll go back to menu for a second and I'll go down to configure view, press OK, and I'm going to add that trip odometer again, and then I'll hit the back button twice, and there's my four screens. So depending, you can configure what you're going to see, but it does change the way it looks. It doesn't just take out one of the squares. Okay, so let's go down one. Okay, this is my view, and again, you've got the menu button showing, so if I click on my view, um, it's the eco coach that's on there so it tells you how you're driving you can have your trip and audio your fuel economy your digital speedometer and then if i go down here you can have the calm screen so if i turn that on i just get a nice sort of a faded blue look so uh, that, that that's the calm look all right i'm gonna press the menu button again and i'm gonna go up here and i'll go to say uh, fuel economy okay and so then yeah, I can have that display instead. So a lot, of, a lot of ways to customize that under my view. Now my particular favorite was just having it set to the digital speedometer. That's just me. But uh, you, you'll notice if you use the um, Eco Coach, that not only do you get a digital speedometer, but it also shows how, how well, you know, economically you're driving. All right, now I'm gonna go down again and we're gonna to go to driver assist. Now, there is no menu button there, so if I press the menu button, nothing happens. Um, what this is gonna do is just showing you if your driver assist systems are on. 
okay? So that one will just keep going down here and then you've got navigation and if I press the menu button there, now I can have some things that are set like my home so it's easy to punch in and, and get to your home. Previous destinations, favorites, uh, the points of interest that are nearby and so on that you could all draw up from here. Let's go to the back button a minute. We'll go down one. This is your audio source. There is no audio on right now, but with the menu button, we can go down to select our source, AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite. Um, you do have uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on this vehicle, as well as Bluetooth. Okay, we'll hit the back button here. We'll go down to phone. There is no phone connected, but if there was, the menu button is there. It's just not active because there's no phone connected. And then you could get into your messages and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, trip information. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and press the menu button. Um, I can do settings on seat belts. I just press the okay button and it'll show me actually uh, that there are zero people seat belted right now. That's because we're sitting still and parked. Uh, if I buckle my seatbelt, it now shows me that my seatbelt, the driver's seatbelt, is buckled. So it's kind of a nice view if you have kids where you can see which seats are belted and which aren't. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go down one here. Uh, engine on, normal operation. Okay. We've got... Uh, this is driver alert, so if, if it senses you're getting sleepy, it will warn you, tell you to take a break. Intelligent four-wheel drive, or intelligent all-wheel drive. Intelligent all-wheel drive picture. This will show you a graphic of, of which tires are getting power as you're driving. Um, you do have a way you can program your keys, and so this is uh, where you can start to do that and where it'll tell you which keys are programmed. Okay, tire pressure sensor. And then oil life. And then a place to reset it if you pressed OK. All right, so a lot of, lot of information up there. So again, all that was just by using these buttons here. And again, if you do see a menu button or icon appear, that means you can use the menu and there are more things in that menu to look at. Okay, well, let's move over to the, dry, or to the infotainment screen. So the way Ford has got this set up here is the, all of your basic buttons just show up right at the bottom right now. And there are, um, under settings, you'll see I've got two buttons showing. One is blue, one is gray. That means there's more to show there. Now, um, this is kind of in the way here, so I'm just going to peel it down. I don't want to completely remove it because it's a brand new car, but then you'll be able to see a little better. Okay, so um, if you want to set up Bluetooth, that's under here. You want to set up your phone, that's under here. Uh, driver assistance, let's take a look at this one. Okay. Take it a second to come in. But this is where all of your driver assistance settings are. So you have adaptive cruise control, your lane keeping system, pre-collision assist, rear view camera, um, blind spot information. And then you can see down here that you've got a long ways to scroll. So if I just go up, um, I can see that, that these particular things are turned on and I can just click on them to turn them off. Okay. So let's just go into one of these because they'll all work similarly. Okay, if I click on cruise control, I can have it as normal or adaptive. So if you don't like the automatic or adaptive cruise control, you can switch it to just be normal cruise control. Now, if I go back here, there's also a little information icon. So if I turn, if I click on that, you actually get a little bit of a dis uh, description of what this button does. So this one says, configure cruise control settings to adapt to traffic ahead. Select normal, adaptive, or intelligent. Okay. Now, when we did that, we had just normal and adaptive. We did not have the intelligent choice. Okay. So any anything you go to, lane keeping assist system, you're going to be able to set things. Quit laughing at my plastic <laughs> falling off. I tried very hard to keep it on there. Okay, so again. Driver assistance settings, safety systems, it's gonna be under uh, settings and under driver assistance. Now let's take a look at what there is under vehicle. Um, so we have, we can set the uh, max idle time. So this does have a remote start. Um, so if you want to change that, you can take that off. Okay, and the car will just keep running. Okay, easy entry and exit. You can turn that uh, feature um, so that your seat does adjust for you. 
So it'll pull forward to whatever position your key fob was, was uh, set to, according to the memory systems on the seat, which is nice. So that's you have a shorter person and a taller person that both drive the same car. This is where you can program the My Key thing under Create My Key, and that's where you can set some of those features. Okay? Um, and then you've got some things on, like, let's see, remote, remote Start Setup. You can have it do climate control for you. So here you can say, you know, do you want it to start heating the seats for you? Or do you want it to go just on last settings, whatever the car was before? Um, let's see, with seats and wheels, okay? So, seats and steering wheel is what that is. I'm thinking tires going, am I got heated tires on here? No, you don't, but you can turn on your heated steering wheel, okay? And uh, while I'm talking about that steering wheel, one of the things I really like about this car is that sometimes when they heat a steering wheel on a car, the whole entire thing is not heated, especially the very top of the steering wheel. This thing is heated 360 degrees around, which I like. All right, so there's a bunch of things that you can set in there for your remote start setup, okay? There's a few more things down here under, uh, you can do like your power lift gate, Enable the switch or disable the switch if you don't want, for some reason, you don't want to use that auto up and down. Okay. Lighting. We've got uh, auto high beam, uh, which is really nice because um, you can, you know, when you're driving, your, your lights will turn on, your high beams will come on automatically, and then when it senses an approaching car, it'll turn them off at an appropriate time. Um, you also have daytime running lights, which I think is interesting. I've seen this before where they allow you to turn them on or off. I, I, I would leave them on. It's, it's why they're built into a car, but you do have the feature there to turn it off. And again, you got this little information icon, which if you click on it, it just tells you what that button does. So if you're wondering, what does that do? Just click on there. All right, and then let's go back here for a minute. Uh, Ford Pass Connect. Um, is an app you can download on your phone. Um, and I'm sure part of it probably comes with a subscription, but when you buy a car new, you'll get that part for at least for a, a limited time. But it allows you to like remote start your vehicle, uh, do the power unlock and locks, um, look at your fuel level, that kind of stuff. And then you can do some other things like schedule services and see a health report on your vehicle. So it's a really nice app. Okay, if I go under general, Here's where I can make some basic settings like from Fahrenheit to Celsius and so forth, miles per gallon to uh, kilometers. Um, so you can also, if you don't like the touch button beep that beeps every time you touch the screen, there's where you turn that off, okay? You can have automatic system updates, okay? And then uh, this is a Sync 3 sound system, uh, obviously because it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Sync 2 did not have that. Okay, so we'll go back here. And then if I, I, I got two dots in the screen, which means I can swipe once to the left and I should have some more icons. All right, you can set up a Wi-Fi hotspot. You can set up 911 Assist, and that works very similar to, to uh, other Ford vehicles where if, if it senses you've been in an accident, it will automatically dial 911 for you, but you do have to enable it, okay? You can set your automatic updates right there. Um, you can look for uh, mobile apps under here uh, you have to enable that first, and it'll sense, you can figure out which apps work with your vehicle. Uh, display. Here's where you can do, uh, affect this screen here. So in terms of the background, you've got some different colors that you can select. Okay, you have got the brightness control that you can uh, change. Okay. You can dim it. Uh, let's see, this is like a day night mode. So if you click it, you can say, I want it just like day, in which case it's gonna stay really bright. If you do night, then it's gonna be darker all the time. And auto switches when it senses the light is getting darker or brighter. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's where you can go into your voice control. Um, so it has a basic mode and it has an advanced mode, which can be turned on or off here. Um, and then, it, but don't use advanced mode until you've practiced a little bit and look it up in the owner's manual so you can see what, what, uh, what works um, in each mode. 
Uh, you got your voice command list, so you can it'll list like what can you say about the audio, what can you ask for with uh, navigation, that kind of stuff. Hey, okay. you do have a valet mode, so you can lock certain features of the car, so people other people can't use it. Then of course we have navigation, and then here's where you can set your different preferences. Okay. All right. So if I go back here now, I'm into audio. Turn that down here. I do like how the volume shows up. They do that in all the Fords now, and I really like that. So basically, you've got uh, your sources up here. Um, you can direct tune a channel. You can look at just all the channels here. Uh, you can bookmark, or you can go back. And then here's your presets right here. Okay. All right, two screens of presets. So if I click on this one, it'll change. Okay, there it goes. And if I go back to this one, then I can see that. All right. And on, if I want to set a channel, I can I can do, do it a couple ways. I can go to this direct tune button, or I can take the tune button right here and just change it. So let's say I want 89.9. Don't know what's there, but don't care. And I'm going to hit, hit and hold right here. And then it gave me a little save line, which I do like that it shows what it's doing. And then it's saved as a preset. Okay. Again, your sources are right here. Okay. And let's see. If I go over here to phone, obviously this is where you can add the phone. Easiest way to do it. Navigation is really nice. Um, and you've got, of course, a plus and minus button here where you can increase or decrease the distance. You've got a menu button right here where you can look at all the different things that you can do um, in the navigation. And then, of course, you have an apps button. Serious Travel Link, if you have never used that before, I absolutely love it. Um, gives you traffic lists, fuel prices, even movie listings, weather, sports info, that kind of stuff, parking. Uh, really, 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 really nice. Last thing I'll point out real quick here is um, if I go into settings, back, if I go to sound, um, this is where you can uh, adjust your treble, mid-range, and your bass, and your balance and fade. This does come with speed compensated volume, so if you go faster and the car's noisier, it increases the volume. If you're going slower, it lowers the volume. Okay, And then you can set the stereo to, do you want it for just the driver, or all the seats, or just up front? And that's basically the infotainment system. Okay, moving quickly down here, the Ford gives you nice physical controls that are separated from everything else. You've got the tune button, we've seen that already. Your volume and your power. You've got a settings button, so if you just click this, instead of going through all those screens, you can go right to uh, adjusting your um, stereo. Forward and backwards buttons, and then a play pause button. And then one of my favorite ones here on new stereos where I can, Click it twice and the whole screen goes black, but it's still functioning. Okay. Okay. Moving down here to the climate control, which again is a separate area I really like. This is an auto climate control single zone. Um, you've got your fan speed over here. You've got uh, your defrosters here. you got the auto button here. You've got your different modes right here. And then you've got recirculatory AC, Mackets AC, and then this is where you change your temperature. I like the little uh, LCD display that does it. It also shows up on your infotainment screen. And then you have a power button for on, off. So then down here, you've got your heated buttons. So you've got your three-stage heated seats on both sides and your heated steering wheel button. And then down here, uh, this is not a smart charging area, um, but it is a nice storage area. You've got a smart charging USB so if you plug in a device that requires more charging power, it will give you up to two amps of charging power. But if you plug in a device that needs less, it will sense that automatically and deliver less. Okay. Uh, and then down here, last part here is the rotary uh, shift knob. Again, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of these on any vehicle, um, but, but it does, it, it functions quite well. Um, you do have a manual button in the middle. If it is in drive and you open the door, it goes into park. Okay. You do have your parking brake here. This is a pull up to activate and a push down to deactivate. Then down here you have your auto hold feature, which you, if you activate it, if you push your brake, if you're driving and you stop at a, at a stoplight or stop sign, once you've come to a stop, you can take your foot off the brake and it will hold the car uh, until you press the accelerator. 
Okay, and that can be turned on or off there. And then finally down here, you've got your auto start stop button, which you can you disable the auto start stop if you want. And then you have your uh, driving modes. And if I push that, you've got normal, economy, sport, slippery, and deep snow or sand. All right, and that's a, uh, a little more in-depth review of the driver's information center, the steering wheel controls, the infotainment screen, and your climate control uh, and some of your safety features. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's helpful. Thanks. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below.